it's time for the webinar. Are you an empath? Come on in and join me. Yes, definitely. Come on in and join me and let's chat. Let's talk about empathic nature, what it means, how it can affect you, and how it can be your superpower. Yes, come on in and join me. Definitely. Terry Ann Hyman here, Natural Forces Studio in the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. Hey guys. Hey Millie. Hey Thelma. Thanks for joining me already. Come on in. Push share if you want. I'm going to do the same before I even get started. I'm going to go ahead and share this out. Share it in the Empowered Spirit Circle. If you're not in there, come on over. I know you ladies are. Didn't we have fun in that spiritual challenge? I loved it. I really did. I loved it. I loved all the posting and seeing all the pictures of people posting their sacred spaces. Really inspired me to clean mine up. Definitely. All right, here we go. I just found it. Copy and share. Hey, I see Marissa joining in. Hey, Cynthia, Tessa, good evening to you too. All right, let me share this in the circle. Powered Spirit Circle. Here we go. Uh-oh. Okay, and then we'll get started. Yeah. It's not letting me share for some reason. Let's do this over. Hold on, guys. Come on in and join me. And if you can, share this out for me. For some reason, I'm having a little trouble on Facebook. Okay, it's still the retrograde for sure. Here we go. Let's share it here right on my timeline. There we go. I know what it is. The link is being cut off. All right, no big deal. But we'll get there in a second. So help me out for a moment, guys. Let's see if I can get this figured out. There we go. It's not letting me share. That's a retrograde issue. It's still not letting me share. I don't know why. Cancel. Let's just put share. Cannot use, nope, share. Share. There we go. Got one share. Hey, Vicki, how are you? Come on in and join me. I'm super excited to be talking about this. This topic, it's so important right now, right? It is just so important that we look at this. The universe is super sensitive right now, which means we are super sensitive too. All right, I don't know if I got all the links in there, but I was able to share it. Yay. All right. Means we are super sensitive too. We are super sensitive in our energy on picking up on everybody else. Really, empaths really are the healers of society. I truly believe it. I truly mean it. They have the strength. They have the core within them to overcome these challenges. But we must train. We must learn. And we really must put our energy out there strong. So that's really the gist of this webinar. We're going to talk a little bit about all these different types, which one affect you, and how you can then know this and use this for your own self-power, really, empowering your spirit. All right. Hey, Jackie, welcome. Hey, Vicki, welcome. Hit the share button if you don't mind. Give me a thumbs up that you can hear me. I still got my beautiful setup, my flowers. I had to add a little water, a new little sacred space. We've been talking about this in the Empowered Spirit Circle. So hopefully you cleared out your old space, refreshed it. I know I did. Lots of cleaning, lots of moving of energy, moving it out. Really important. All right. Yay. I got some thumbs up and some hearts. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Definitely. So maybe you have been noticing it. Maybe you have been going through some struggles yourself. I know I've had mine lately too, which is requiring me to really dig in, to strengthen my boundaries, to really listen to that part of me that needs it. Definitely. We need that energy. So hopefully that you have been doing this as well. All right. So for those of you that don't know my story, I think most of you do, but just in case you're listening and you don't know my story, it really began back in the 90s, right? I tell this, I was living in New York, two small children, living on Long Island, really busy making jewelry. One morning, my husband walked in the kitchen and he's like, I'm in love with another woman. I'm like, what? Where am I? Like, who am I? Who had I been listening to? And it was that thought, who had I been listening to? Not my spirit that really changed so much for me. I really began to question that. Who was I? I didn't even know who I was, and I certainly had not been listening to me, because you know what? I'll be honest. I knew. I knew her. 
I knew what was going on, but I was too busy to listen. I was too busy to really find that power within me to do something about it. I had just gotten contracts in New York City with my jewelry, Eileen Fisher stores. That's exciting. Two small children, back and forth to New York City. I was a mom because I was too busy. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't have the skills. I didn't have the knowledge. No, I really didn't. Because you say, I'm an emotional empath. I am. And I was married to a narcissistic person. Not a good combination. Not a good combination at all. Definitely. Somebody that's very empathic is married to somebody like that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that kind of combination as we move through the six types. But that began to be my problem. All right? I was taken on a lot. I was really losing my self-esteem. I was losing my emotional ability. I was taking a lot of verbally and emotional abuse, right? Highly sensitive to all of it. There was a lot of transference going on, thinking it was all my fault, right? And this doesn't just happen to emotional impasse. This happens to all impasse, really. When we don't know our energy, we don't know our boundaries, we don't know how to help ourselves, right? We're so busy helping everybody else and taking on everybody else's energy. We really don't know how to help ourselves and we don't have those boundaries. We become dumped on, we become drained of energy. All of that kind of thing was happening and that's what happens when we aren't aware of how we process our energy, when we aren't aware of what kind of energy we have and especially if we know we're sensitive. All right, give me a thumbs up if you know you're sensitive. Give me a thumbs up if you've had these feelings happen to you too. Taking on others' energy maybe, being dumped on. And really, it doesn't start like dumping on. Like you're, you're empathetic to people. Like, oh, how's your day? And all of a sudden, they tell you. And that opens the doorway. And then that doorway gets bigger and bigger. And every day, they're coming in. All right, getting lots of thumbs up on that. Every day, they're coming in. And they're just dumping all their stuff. They leave feeling great. And you're like... What happened? What happened to me? Like, really? It's only 8 o'clock. Can I go home, right? This is what happens when we become super sensitive and we don't have those boundaries in place. We don't have the ability to distinguish our energy from everybody else's energy. Really important right now. And again, empaths, they are the healers of the world right now. We need this energy, but we don't need it if we're not going to be responsible and learn and train it. All right? We really need to know our boundaries. Very important. That's one of the things that is really helpful for me was when I began to recognize that I was sensitive. I did have some energy gifts that I had no idea. Working with Catherine, gosh, she began to show me these things. And then I began to stand up for myself, which when you're with a narcissistic person, they don't like that, right? You begin to assert your power. All of a sudden, they're not center of attention. So that created more shifts too. And so it took a while to get that strong energy going. But once I began to really learn and notice that, no, not everybody is this way. No, not everybody can read energy. These are gifts that I have. And this is from the sensitivity of life and the gifts that I came forward with. Hey, Karen, how are you? Hey, Regina. Good to see you guys on. So maybe you can relate to some of this, right, Karen? I know you can. I know some of the work that we've done together, right? When you're in a situation where you're super sensitive and the person you're with is self-centered, narcissistic around you, you can't hold it, right? And I know one of the postings I posted about today, too, was that I had that emotional thing going on, too, taking in all those emotions, and I really couldn't distinguish mine from everybody else's, so I kept trying to balance it with food, I would eat a lot to try to process, but that wasn't helping it either, right? You can't do that with food. That's not what food is about. And that was just making it worse. But once I began to recognize that I was sensitive and I was an empath, I could begin to learn my energy system. So let's just take a moment and go through the six types. There are more. I'll be honest, there are more, but we're going to start with six and talk about that. All right, Karen says definitely, right? Not a fun situation to be in, but the more we learn ourselves the more we have it here. Scotch here. All right, there you go. You've been working down that law office, right? <laughs> hey, do you know the American Idol, Marissa? That's on from our law offices down here. All right, I digress. Let's go back to the sixth type of impasse and let me know which one you feel like you fit into. So obviously we've talked about the first one, all right? We'll talk about that one a little bit more. The emotional empath, all right? This is actually what they say is to be one of the most common, where we feel the emotions of others, all right? Now, it's not a bad thing to feel the emotions at all, right? We want to be caring. We want to be loving, but we don't need to hold on to it. We don't need to bring all that energy in because the more you hold on to everybody else's, you cannot, like I was talking about me, you cannot decipher your energy from everybody else's. So that is one of the most important ones. And the way that you feel is like when you walk into the room or you're talking to someone, you feel their sadness, you feel their joy. Generally, it's that stress and that overbearing energy. And then you begin to take it on 
And all of a sudden you find yourself sad or tired or low energy or frustrated, whatever their energy is, you start to match it. All right, and that's that emotional, emotional um, impact that can be really, really quite draining. And then, like I was saying, when you get them involved, when you get involved with someone that's very narcissistic, it's really hard to balance that energy. Narcissistic people become self-centered. They want to bring you in. And at first, it feels great, and you think everything's fine. But you start taking in all that energy. You become the sponge. Or in my case, you become like the doormat, where you just take all the shit, and you think it's all yours, and it's not. And then you try to do something about it, and then that just really aggravates them, but you have to learn your boundaries. And you can, you can work this through, but you really have to know your boundaries. So that's the first type, the emotional empath. Now you can be a little combination of more than one, so let me know if you are that way. Give me a thumbs up, give me an I am, emotional empath, something to let me know that that is what is about for you. Hey, Diane, let me know if that one fits your type, all right? Then we move into another one that kind of fits me as well, and maybe it will with you too, and that's that intuitive empath. That's when we start getting to the clairs. A lot of you know this, right? When we start feeling and seeing and knowing, like we can walk into a room and we can just ascertain information from people all around us. Now, this one is very draining if you don't know your boundaries, and lots of people don't know that they have this gift. Like I was saying before, you might just think everybody does this. Like everybody can kind of like that tele telepathy, like you can read people's mind. You can know what they're thinking. You can know what they're doing, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be the emotional energy, but you just know what's going on and you get into that situation. And then again, like I was saying, because you're an empath and you're nice and all, you start opening those gates up and people just really come in because they'll know if they dump on you and they may not do this consciously, all right? They probably don't. They leave feeling better, but then you've got all this in. So they do cross over these two, the emotional and the intuitive. They do cross over. And they're really important to learn which you are, to distinguish it, because that's going to help you know how to build it. All right, really important. Hey, Heather, you made it, definitely. Very important. Which do you think you are? Can you tell the difference between the emotional empath or the intuitive, the clair, the clair cognizant? Sometimes they'll just distinguish it, but I think it's really all the clairs, which you talk about, the clair audience, clair visual, which is clairvoyant, <laughs> clair essence, feeling, and clair cognizance is the knowing. So when you know you're one of those, you need to be extra careful too. And these are those boundaries, those boundaries that are really important and how you get rid of the energy really important too. All right. Like when I was learning how to work with my, my um, husband at the time, I had to figure out how not to have that energy come at me. I had to figure out how to let his energy go so that I could do what I needed to do and not feel like I was responsible for every single thing in the world. Right. And many of us will take that on. All right. So Cynthia says, Tessa says she is both. Right. So knowing that you can begin to train in both of those, the, the Claire Essence and the Claire the clairv um, clairvoyant, you can train in those, but knowing your boundaries, knowing when you're taking it on and knowing those emotions, all right, really knowing those emotions. One of the greatest things I learned about myself was when I had that emotional energy coming on, release the excess energy, but use the knowledge, then remain neutral, really important, all right? They are gifts, but you do have to train them, all right? So being an empath is not easy at times, but when we have the training and we can do it, then we can really move forward and understand it so much more. And I say, become your superpowers, right? Really become your superpowers, definitely. Now, the third type we talk about is, um, some people call it physical. I like to look at it as the medical empath, right? When we, we can walk into a room or be around people, really, and like know what's wrong with them. Like we have that sensation come up. We know if there's cancer in the body. We know if there's something going on with their heart. We know if there's something going on with the liver, these kind of things. And again, sometimes this will cross over into the feeling because we feel it in the body. Lots of times I see this with my massage therapist that I teach, right? They're working on somebody that somebody leaves and they're like, wait, didn't they just have a hip issue and now I've got the hip issue, right? So they're taking on that. All right, and this is a really important empath, right? A really important gift to have in the world, but it does need training. It needs some medical training and it needs some healing training. A lot of our healers have this one too because they feel that pain. I know when I see people that are in bad health, I feel that too, right? And I did think about training like that. I thought about, well, maybe this is what it was. I studied a lot of work with Carolyn Mays, Norm Sheely, even Dr. Lieberman, who was on my um, Empowered Spirit Show last week. I studied their work and thought, well, maybe... We're going to get to the hypochondriads. That's actually, yes, that's actually right there too. When the pairing of hypochondriads, uh, Marissa, you jumped it. Yes, when you pair a 
pair somebody that has that medical impact of the hypochondria, that's not a great combination either, right? Because they're always complaining, they're always taking on the energy of it, and then that's that really low energy vibration between that. So yes, that does fall into it. Also, a little bit of self-sabotage falls into that as well. So if you feel like you are feeling other people's pain, or you can sense their problems, or you are a massage therapist, and they come in and you notice where that pain is in the body, really important, really important to actually, you know, be able to train with this so that you know the difference. And and I think one of the things that, you know, Carolyn Mays kind of helped me understand this, like you do need some medical training, you do need some background in this. So that was kind of why I came in and kind of went with the path that I went through because I didn't have the medical training, but I still feel the pain and now I've learned not to take it on. So lots of times when I am working on people, that pain will come into me and I'll go, okay, I know this isn't mine because my energy has been cleared and then I'll know where to work on them. So when we know this, again, we can use this for our greatest advantage, really important. So Marissa, does that answer your question about the hypochondriacs, how they fit in? All right, so I wouldn't necessarily say the hypochondriac was an empath, but sometimes empaths can associate some of that energy with it, right? Does that make sense? Because you're picking up and you're, you're feeling other people's pain, so you think something is wrong with you. Really, really fine line, and that's where those boundaries are really important. Yes, my whole family, right? <laughs> Yeah, I hear you on that. So really important, right, that we don't pick up that energy and that we do distinguish it. And again, if you are in the healing field and this is what you're noticing, this is where we train. This is where you learn to use those gifts for you. Really important, right? Don't pick up those symptoms, right? And we know that. There are certain people I know when I'm around, I just feel the pain and it's really hard for me to be around. But at least I know it's not mine. And that's the big difference, right? Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. All right, those are really the three, those are really big, important impasse to understand and determine which one it is for you, definitely. Now, another one we have, and I have a little bit of this too, got a thumbs up there, all right. I'm a massage therapist and I don't pick up. All right, then you don't have that impasse, Cynthia. There you go, good, Tessa, good, all right. Some of, them, some of the massage therapists that I train with, they do have that issue, they do pick that up. So very important that you know that, excellent. But you were saying you have the other two, right? You have the emotional and the intuitive, right? So knowing that is just as important too. Picking up people's feelings is important too to know when you have that difference. All right, I got a thumbs up for that. All right, the geometric empath, that's one that's really sensitive to sacred spaces, to land, to being on the earth. Like you know you're in a vortex of energy or you know that there's some bad energy in a piece of land or property, right? That's a really important one too. Lots of people have this sensitivity, especially if they're doing sacred ceremonies, if they're working on the earth, that kind of thing. Environmental issues too. Now, sometimes if you don't, know that you have this awareness, this empath ability, you can get sick from being in toxic environments. You can be super sensitive to say like, like cleaning products, right? They can really hit you really strong or you're lighting in an office building. You can be just really sensitive and notice that this is, and everybody else is like, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong in here, right? But no, this is part of that too. When you're super sensitive to space and the area that you're working in. To me, that's why we do sacred spaces, right? To help build that sacred space within you. Cause I know I'm super sensitive to spaces. I know that's why I like to be out in my sacred wheel, my medicine wheel, it feels good, I can feel that. And you may notice it for yourself when you travel, when you go to different places, maybe you have that moment where you're going like, wow, this is really cool, this is really neat, I know I've been here, or this is a really amazing land, or something happened here. That's where that energy comes in. Very, very important energy too, especially if you're working on the land, if you're working in sacred spaces in terms of like, you know, ceremonies, that kind of thing. Very important empath as well, definitely. Let me know if any of you guys have felt that before. Have you ever gone into a sacred grounds and known that? All right, hey Brooke, thanks for joining us. Have you ever felt that when you're on the earth and you've been to a place? I know sometimes when I go scouting out, I'll take a moment and kind of just got a thumbs up. Yeah, I got just kind of close my eyes and I want to feel the land and I listen and hear and I sense where I am. That's what that's about and that can be very powerful right? Very powerful energy. And we don't want to get sick from toxic environments. And believe me, there are enough offices out there, right, that have that. So very important that you learn how to, how to really create those boundaries for yourself as well. Really, really important. All right. You'll need to spend time outside. You'll need to spend time recharging your energy, being out there. And if you don't know this, you may not realize that's what you need to do. 
Sean says he felt like that in Holland. Yay. I hear you on that, right? Holland's beautiful. It's like you might have had a past life there too. It's like, yeah, this is really cool. This is, I know this. I feel this. You feel strong in it. When we talk about that in Reiki, we talk about that with like, you know, Mount Kuriyama and places like that. If you're sensitive, you can pick that up. Maybe you've been out to Sedona and you feel the difference in energy and you're with somebody they're like, no big deal, right? That's the difference, right? Where you can really feel the earth and the energy that's coming forward for you. All right, got a heart up for that one. All right, so yes, you guys can definitely relate. All right, then the next one we talk about, I've had a few people come in to me to work for this, is a plant empath, right? Karen says Hudson Valley. Hudson Valley is beautiful. I agree with that too, Karen. Oh my God, I was thinking about that today. I almost moved to Beacon. Yeah, I was definitely thinking about that. There was a little place on the on the water here, I was at the Cava Creek, and it's like, wow, what does this remind me of? And it was up there in Beacon. Yes, definitely. So the next one that we talk about is the plant empath. Now that one is really important too, and you may notice this. Like you guys probably know Cameron. Cameron's done some work with me. She's very sensitive. She can hear advice from the plants. She knows them. She resonates, and that has become her business, right? Very important, right? For medicinal pro properties and working with the, the herbs and stuff, really important. And if you don't know this, you may struggle with why I'm indoors all the time. Why can't I get out? What's wrong with me, right? You may have a little harder time in the winter when things seem to be not blooming as much, right? But when we have that sensitivity, Sean, maybe you know a little bit of this, right? Give me a thumbs up on that one, Sean. Very sensitive to plants. Let me take a sip of water. And very important, especially now. Let me tell you, what I'm going through now, talking to everybody about the oils, and about mushrooms, right? All these great mushrooms now that we have out there. This is because there are people that are super sensitive and can pick up the messages that the plants have for us right now, right? Earth is our friend. We have to. Sean's laughing very, very definitely. I hear you on that. Me too. You know, I was out today walking and I was taking pictures like all the little spring flowers are coming out and they've got to be really important for us because they're coming out now. And I had to stop and take pictures because to me, I resonate with them too. They're just beautiful. So when we're impasse, we can have many various ones. And then there's going to be ones that we're going to really be hypersensitive to and really train in really for our purpose in life to help us go forward. And this might be one of the things you're looking to do as well. Definitely. I love the plants. And we've had a couple of talks, uh, Cameron and I, about how the plants will tell us exactly what we need. That's what they're there for. So when you have this super sensitive energy, when you have this empath energy, it becomes knowledge. And sometimes if you don't know this, you may think something's wrong with you. You may think like, I'm crazy. Like nobody believes me. Like, why do they think the plants talk to me? Right? That's what happens when we don't train these abilities that we have, which falls right into that next one that we have. And that's the animal empath, right? All right. Where's Sam on this one? That's the animal empath. When we have that sensitivity working with animals, when we can hear what they have to say, when we can pick up what's going on. Very important, right? Very important. A whole field is opened up in this kind of energy, right? Where we can really train and really tune in, right? And maybe if we don't know that, maybe all we're going to do is just collect a lot of animals and we're not serving. We're just collecting them and we have them and we don't know what to do, but we know we're super, super sensitive. And again, I mean, that's, that's great, but you're not a shelter, right? And you're not going to help out training and learning how we can best help our animals and help the pet animal owners, right? Is really, really important. Sam's working with that, right? And really important. And the more she works with it, the more we learn, the more we can understand. They're super Super sensitive too, right? They're pulling all of our emotions for us. So why not have the sensitivity as humans, right? It makes sense to me. It really does. Very important. All right. You'll need to spend time with the animals as much as you can. And maybe you wonder why you prefer animals to people, <laughs> right? That's exactly what it is. Don't animals mirror energy and personalities? Yes, most of them do. And most of them... I guess mirror is a good word, but I've always looked at it as they like kind of pull the energy off. They're very empathic too. So they're pulling that energy off of us. They're pulling whatever you're dealing with and helping you. I know when my cat died, I brought him down, Zorro. I don't know if any of you guys know Zorro, but I brought him to New York for me. And I got him when I first went through that divorce. I was my own little baby, right? That thing, the kids would go to their dads, they'd take the dog, be me. And I had Zorro. And when Zorro died, I recognized how much he had taken on for me. And so, yeah, I think that answers the question, right? Cool. Yeah, they really do. And that's why it's so important that we help them clear their energy. I know Sam's been working with that, helping to clear out their energy for them. 
Otherwise, they end up developing some of the diseases that we have, human diseases. Isn't that crazy? But they do. So knowing if we have that intuitive ability can help you in your path, especially if you're in the animal industry, if you're in the vet, if you're pet sitting, if you want to even do more with it, it's definitely a field that can open up and something that you can really train to do. So it may not be as intense, um, the plant or the animal one, or even the geomagic one, as much as the first two that we, first three that we talked about because you're dealing with a little bit different, but if you're not aware, you can tend to become sick or feel isolated or feel like something's wrong because you have these sensitivities and no one to talk about it with, no one to discuss it, or even confirm that you do. Really important. Kind of like what I was talking about when I first started with Catherine, I didn't realize what I was doing. I didn't realize I was taking all that in. I didn't realize I had gifts that I could train. I remember the first time she showed me how to kind of zip up the chakras, how to zip up that meridian system. It's like, whoa. Then I started able to really protect my space. And then I started realizing I didn't have to take it on. It wasn't necessary. My health started improving, my power, my spirit, everything started improving. And so can you. Because really, when we know our energy, we can create boundaries, we can create many different aspects of our life to open up their energy techniques their spiritual tools that you can use to help you build this sensitivity it really really can Inter intuition if you don't know this your intuition is going to struggle it really is to me this is the first step in understanding then once you recognize where you are in that empathic nature then you can move into being the intuitive person that you are and that's a muscle too that's a muscle that we train and we grow. The more you work with it, the more it grows, the more you recognize, and the more you can really use it to show up in your life with confidence, to show up with your boundaries, to be able to stand up for yourself, even in a work environment. We don't have to use this stuff just for our meditation little area, right? We can take this to work with us. We can have that confidence to speak up for ourselves, to know our boundaries, to know when we're taking on. I know I've worked with people and they'll talk about being in a meeting and they'll feel everybody's sensitivity and they'll think something's wrong with them when all they're really doing is picking up on everybody else's. Now, when you turn that into your power, your superpower, you know where people stand. You keep your energy strong gives you an advantage, right? You know more of what's going on rather than sucking it up, right? We don't want to suck it up. We really, really don't. We don't want to suck it up. Empaths are hugely popular. I said this at the beginning, and I'm going to say it again too. They are the healers of society right now. They really are. They have the inner strength, but we don't want them to be drained. We don't want them to be so sensitive that we're not helping and we're hurting, right? Because right now, again, the universe is super sensitive too. So we have to train this and we have to really help to improve that sensitivity all around. All right, so how helpful was that? Were you able to identify a little bit? Where are you? Give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Let me know if you were, all right? Able to identify with that a little bit. And if this is of interest to you, give me another thumbs up too. All right, if this is of interest to you and you're interested in training, let me know. All right, yay, I've got some thumbs up, some hearts. Thank you, guys, definitely. Because I know most of you know me. You know I like to work one-on-one. -on -one. That's how I've been working for these last several years, one-on-one. -on -one. But I have some people that really feel limited. I feel like I can't get my work out to enough people. I've had a lot of younger kids coming in, already born with these intuitive abilities and not knowing what to do. So I am definitely creating a solution for that, which is my group program. Yay, the Empowered Spirit Group Program. I am opening it up tonight. Here we go. Yay, I'm opening up registration for that. It's a group program and it's online. It's on the Zoom app. We're going to go through these abilities. We're going to go through these tools and techniques. We're going to give you the opportunity to learn, to share, to work with each other in a group so that you can strengthen this. It's an opportunity for you to work with me and a group. All right. Lots of people really can appreciate that group setting. They can help you to learn even more about your skills. And then as we learn, we'll do some private mentoring. We'll bring out the Oracle cards as well and continue it that way too. So the information I'll post below Oh, wowie. Yay, Brooke. Yay, definitely. It's going to be really great. I'll go with it. The, the link is in there. I'll go with a few of the information a little bit more, but there's definitely more information online. You can always PM me with questions, but it's going to be on Monday nights on the Zoom apps. So you can take it from anywhere you want. You can do it on your phone, your laptop, your computer. I love Zoom because you can also use the video to come online. We can ask questions meditation we're going to start getting you into that sympathetic system right away with our breath 
We're going to look at the four clairs. There's videos, audios. There's a program site, website for you to go to to have all that information downloaded. We're going to practice with each other, have a Facebook group. So we'll go through our tools. We're going to determine how you process energy. We're going to discover all about energy fields. Really important, creating boundaries, energy boundaries, and removing those energy drains. Cutting cords, really important that we learn that. And then we'll bring out the oracle cards, practice reading on each other. And then as a bonus, some essential oils. What oils will help you enhance this? What oils will really be good for your own health? We'll have a challenge each week for you to work on. So you come back feeling empowered. The opportunity to ask me any kind of questions that you want. Really open to all of that for you. All right, now, many of you have been through the program for me. So, yes, if you want to come back again, because, again, it's so powerful, right? Yes, I've got to send you. You probably got an email with a promo code. You can come back in at a reduced rate. I'm offering that for all those that have already done the work with me and want some extra support. I know that group work is really important, so I wanted to open it up for that as well. As part of the Spiritual Development Academy, you're going to get that promo code. So on the website are the prices. If you join in full, fast action, $5.95 plus, you'll get a session with me. We'll talk about your abilities. We'll see what's going on. You'll get an extra reading. That in itself is another $125. So there you go with that fast action. And if you need a payment plan, I have that figured out. Three easy payments, $210. Spread it out over the course of the three months. That'll be a really easy way to do it. And there's also PayPal. If you want to do a PayPal credit or something like that, let me know and I can I can arrange that as well. All right, guys, I'm really excited to be able to get this work out to more people. I love teaching this. I'm really passionate about it. I think you know that about me by now. I'm here to help and to serve. That is definitely my mission. So let me know if you have questions. Definitely it starts next week. So let's do it. Let's jump on it. Let me know if you have any questions. Take advantage of that fast action and get a session with me before we even start so that I can help you with this path. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I hope the six impasse were helpful to you. At least maybe you'll learn something from this and take this with you wherever you go. But again, impasse are important. We need this work to come forward. You must train it, you must learn it, and it's not hard. Spirit loves amusement. You'll hear me saying that all the time. It makes life more enriched. It makes life more fun to be in that present moment. You've heard me talk about on the Empowered Spirit Show, being in that present moment, having those aha moments, this is how we do it. This is how we find those moments, you know, that can turn your life around. Like for me, that moment in the car when I heard, I'm going to be okay. Had I not been paying attention like I wasn't before, I never would have gotten this to where I am now. So I want to offer you that as well. Find those moments for yourself. Learn about your energy. As you know, on that first page of the program on my website, you will see... You will see, know your energy. Very important. All right, guys, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you want to join. Let me know if you have any questions. Oh, I forgot. I was going to draw the winners of the, here we go, the winners of the, um, of the spiritual challenge. So the first one I'm drawing here is for those that brought in the most people. There was four people in here. Brooke, thank you. Catherine, thank you. And A, thank you. I think there was just the three. All right, I'm putting my hands in here. I'm going to draw it out. Catherine, Catherine Harris. All right, Catherine, you have a spot in the class. And the next one is for an Akashic reading for me, for those that posted the most. This one, we have about five people in here that was very consistent. And that winner goes to Brooke. All right, Brooke, yay. All right, you got another reading with me. Actually, you have two. Let's use them. All right, guys, thanks again for joining me tonight. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was helpful. And please do join the program. It is for the highest good, my purpose, my mission. Empower the spirit. Show up strong and confident. Live your life, all right, to your spirit. Namaste.